Good morning, everybody. I'm Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In just a moment, I'm going to begin a description of what's actually happening uh, today at NASA. Mars 2020 Perseverance rover lands on the surface of Mars. I'm going to take a few minutes just to uh, give up folks an opportunity to join us here as I give a little bit of a description of what's going to happen today. Today is going to be one of the most exciting uh, activities or events you can ever see in planetary exploration. Today, a rover is going to set down on the surface of Mars. It's going to be quite an interesting ordeal for the spacecraft to get through the atmosphere, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But I just want to give everybody a chance to join us here today, get on board with us as we review what's going to happen this afternoon. My name is Derek Pitts. I'm Chief Astronomer at the Science Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hopefully you can see uh, the sweatshirt I'm wearing today, Occupy Mars, and we're going to start a little bit of that work today with the landing of the Mars 2020 rover, Perseverance on the Surface of Mars. Uh, today really is one of those days in which engineers and scientists at the Jet Propulsion Center's control uh, room are sitting with bated breath, actually holding their breath, uh, waiting for a successful landing on the surface of Mars of the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover. We'll get started in just a moment here. If you'll just hang with us while we get another few people on board, we'll get started with the description of what's happening this afternoon. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to throw them in the comments area. Hopefully I'll be able to answer your questions for you. And if not uh, during the broadcast, I'll be sure to follow up and uh, send you some responses later. Thanks a lot for joining us. Again, my name is Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We'll give it just another minute for folks to uh, get on board. Uh, this is the culmination of a very, very long trip from Earth out to Mars. And uh, it's the most exciting part, almost the most exciting part, of the entire mission. Uh, the mission is meant to last one Martian year, about 687 Earth days. It's really two Earth years. Uh, and hopefully some of the mission objectives uh, will be exciting as well. But it's going to start out with quite an exciting beginning uh, as the spacecraft comes down to land on the surface of Mars. Okay, it's just a couple of minutes after 11, so uh, let's get started with this overview that I'm going to present to you today about the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover that's landing on the surface of Mars this afternoon. Back in July of 2020, about seven months ago, NASA launched out to Mars a spacecraft carrying the next in a series of surface rovers for the planet Mars. This one that they sent out is named Perseverance. And Perseverance is the Mars 2020 rover that's been sent to Mars to extend a little bit more of the work that other rovers have been doing on Mars. This is the latest addition to a suite of roving robotic laboratories that are exploring Mars. And it gets there this afternoon. Said it's been traveling for hours, And it will enter the atmosphere this afternoon at about 3.35 p.m. Enter the atmosphere of Mars at about 3.35 p.m. Most interesting about the spacecraft and its arrival at Mars is that it has been traveling at 47,000 miles per hour. It's going to come into contact with the Martian atmosphere after slowing down dramatically. Uh, it's going to enter the Earth's atmosphere, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to enter the Martian atmosphere at about 13,000 miles per hour. 13,000 miles per hour. That's an incredible speed. Interestingly enough, the atmosphere of Mars is extraordinarily thin. It's so thin, it will still have an effect on the spacecraft as it comes down through the atmosphere. But it doesn't have enough in the atmosphere to slow the spacecraft down dramatically. So a lot of work has to be done to bleed off all the extra velocity that the spacecraft has to land on the surface. Now, once the spacecraft gets down onto the surface of the planet, it has a number of science objectives that it's going to pursue. Here are just a couple of those science objectives it's going to pursue, or the rover is going to pursue once it gets down to the surface. It's going to look for signs of past microbial life. This spacecraft is landing at a location called Jezero Crater. And Jezero Crater is a really interesting place to look on the surface of Mars, to explore on the surface of Mars, mostly because in the early history of Mars, when Mars was much warmer and much wetter than it is now, Jezero Crater 
was actually a lake filled with liquid water. In that lake of liquid water flowed a river. A stream came into it to fill that crater. And as that water came in to fill the crater, a delta was created where the river came into the crater. Much like we'd find a delta here on Earth at the mouth of a river, say for example, uh, the Mississippi River as it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. There's an incredible delta of sediment there uh, where the river dumps its sediment load into the Gulf of Mexico, right there near New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, that's a similar kind of location at Jezero Crater where the spacecraft, Perseverance, the rover is going to set down on the surface of Mars this afternoon. The intent of landing there is the idea that this is probably one of the best places on Mars to look for evidence of the past existence of microbial life. So that's one of the science objectives, uh, probably the biggest science objective of the rover's life on Mars over the next two years, is to see if it can come up with any evidence of the past existence of microbial life. This rover is also going to collect rock samples, rock core samples, and soil samples to be sent back to Earth for further study. Now, this rover actually is a roving science laboratory. It has a lot of onboard test equipment that will allow it to test soil. And but for a much deeper examination and understanding about these soils and about the rock samples that it's going to collect, what the rover is going to do is it's going to collect the samples, prepare them, and store them on the surface of Mars for return to Earth no earlier than the year 2031. So another spacecraft in the series of these spacecraft going to Mars will go down to Mars in the future, not too distant future, in the next seven years or so, collect those rocks and bring them back to Earth. And that's going to be an incredible mission too, but that's, that's a ways off yet. But this particular mission is going to drill the rock samples, collect the soil samples, pull them all together and cache them, hold them in a spot where they can be picked up for later return to Earth. One of the other things that's going to be done by this rover is it has a laboratory component on board that will allow the spacecraft to take in some of the Martian atmosphere and test the Martian atmosphere for oxygen to see if enough oxygen can be produced out of the Martian atmosphere to provide an oxygen supply for human explorers to take advantage of once we arrive on Mars in the not too distant future. So this is a really critical test because if it can be determined by this rover that oxygen can be drawn from the Martian atmosphere in quantity enough, that means that uh, astronauts won't have to carry the oxygen that they would need uh, for an exploration on the surface of Mars. We can actually send ma uh, equipment machinery there in advance of human explorers that can generate enough oxygen out of the Martian atmosphere. That's a really important step for successful human exploration of the surface of Mars. Uh, last but not least, one of the other things that's going to happen on this mission is we're going to try and fly a helicopter, like a drone, on Mars in the very, very thin Martian atmosphere. Now that particular objective is really going to test the engineering skills of engineers here on Earth that built this helicopter to fly in this very, very, very thin atmosphere. It'll be a test of all of those um, principles of aerodynamics that the Wright brothers came up with in the early 20th century that allowed them to build the first powered aircraft. So we'll see how those uh, laws and principles are, are adapted for use on the planet Mars. It should be an exciting uh, way for us to further explore Mars. And of course, you know, if there's going to be a drone flying, there's going to be a camera on board, so we'll be able to get those images back here on Earth and see what Mars looks like from a drone flying across the surface. Now those are four of some of the science objectives that are going to be pursued by the rover Mars 2020 Perseverance once it lands on the surface. But that's once it lands on the surface. There's a whole lot that has to happen between now and when the spacecraft lands on the surface. So let's just go back and take a look quickly at what's going to happen this afternoon when the spacecraft begins to enter the Martian atmosphere. So the time of entry into the Martian atmosphere is at about 3.35 this afternoon. About 3.35 this afternoon is when the spacecraft first begins to encounter 
the upper atmosphere of Mars. Traveling at 13,000 miles per hour, the next thing that has to happen is that the spacecraft has to lose that velocity, a safe, a safe landing on the surface, and that's going to take some work. It's actually going to take about seven minutes from the point at which it hits the top of the atmosphere to when it lands on the surface. So not much time there at all. Of course, going as fast as it's going, it makes sense that it would only take uh, that short period of time. However, here's what has to happen. The spacecraft has to not only lose all of that velocity, but it also has to get rid of the shells that are protecting the rover, that protected the rover as it flew through space. So the clamshell design that protected the rover has to be jettisoned or blown away from the spacecraft, and parachutes have to be used to slow the space. The spacecraft that's going to be used is, gosh, one of the most uh, durable uh, parachutes that has ever been built. And it's thought that this parachute was going to do a fabulous job of slowing the spacecraft down from that 13,000 miles uh, down to just a few thousand miles per hour as it continues to drop down toward the surface of Mars. And then what will happen is that rockets on the, uh, on the lander itself, uh, not the rover, but the landing package itself, will actually slow the spacecraft as it comes down to settle just 20 meters above the surface. And then a very interesting system, system will actually crane the rover down from 20 meters above the surface down to the surface of Mars with the wheels deployed so that it can sit right on the surface of Mars. Once the spacecraft has detected that it's safe on the surface, that sky crane of flying platform will then separate itself from the rover and that will fly off to a safe distance. Now the reason why the spacecraft doesn't land right on the surface using those retro rockets, if you will, to slow its descent and drop it right onto the surface is because the rockets that need to be used for this would kick up a tremendous amount of dust. And the last thing we really want to do is to contaminate the rover with a cloud of dust or a layer of dust before it even gets started. So the idea is to allow this retro rocket package to bring the rover down to within 20 meters of the surface, then use a sky crane, a series of cables to bring the rover down to the surface where it can sit on its wheels, and then cut that that flying portion away and have it fly away where it won't do any damage. Then the rover will be down on the surface. Now in order for this sequence to work from the moment it enters the atmosphere to the moment it lands on the surface, so many other things have to happen. So many other engineering aspects have to happen. The steering, the guidance, the uh, opportunity for the spacecraft to actually look down at the surface of Mars as it's heading down to identify a safe place to land within the target area and then be able to pinpoint exactly where it wants to drop down. Well, this all takes an incredible amount of engineering, an incredible amount of design planning, and frankly, computer coding. And here's the reason why. It's because this can't be done as it's happening. Mars right now is far enough away that any signal we want to send out to Mars is going to take approximately 11 to 12 minutes to get out to Mars. Now let's just think about that for a second. If it takes about 11 to 12 minutes for a signal to get out to Mars, but it only takes 7 minutes for the spacecraft to land on the surface from the time it hits the atmosphere to the time it actually lands, well that means that we have, what, 4 extra minutes in there uh, when there's no communication. Well, here's the overall picture on this. What's going to happen is, in that seven minutes, the spacecraft has to do all of the work it needs to do to get itself from the upper atmosphere down to the surface of the planet automatically. All of that has to be done automatically by onboard commuters, computers that are controlling and sequencing everything that has to happen. Now, that's critically important because if we needed to do any kind of course correction at all, if it takes the signal 11 minutes to get there, the spacecraft will either be down on the surface safely or, not such a good alternative, before our signal even gets there. So this is the real genius of the project, is that the engineers have built all of the instructions necessary to safely get the spacecraft from the top of the atmosphere down to the surface in seven minutes completely autonomously. 
What does that mean for the engineers? They sit, biting their fingernails from that moment when it hits the atmosphere to the time at which it gets down to the surface of the planet. So this is indeed one of the most exciting aspects of the journey that uh, everybody is going to be watching very carefully to make sure that everything goes well. It is indeed the riskiest part of the mission. This is the part that's called entry, descent, and landing. Very, very complicated. Every step has to be executed perfectly, perfectly, or the spacecraft breaks up as it descends coming down through the atmosphere or it crash lands on the planet. Of course, we're keeping our fingers crossed. The engineers have done a tremendous amount of work to make sure that everything is going to work, uh, work perfectly. And uh, hopefully it'll all work the way we really want it to work. So uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for all of that this afternoon. So now you can actually follow this live as it's happening. Just like the engineers are following it live, you can follow it live too. So you can find all the information that you need to know about this mission at the NASA websites where all of this information is available. If you go to nasa.gov, you can actually find links for the Mars 2020 Perseverance rover mission. And those links will take you to a tab called Timeline in which you can actually select the landing tab. And under the landing tab, you can follow step by step as the spacecraft descends towards the surface of the planet. You can also follow everything at NASA TV. So if you have an Apple TV box or a Roku box or any of those other sort of streaming devices, you can find the NASA TV app on those boxes and you can watch what's happening live as the information comes back to the NASA JPL Control Center where they're monitoring everything that's going to be happening this afternoon. So you can participate, you can watch live that way. Uh, so you can either do it through NASA TV on one of the streaming boxes, or you can go to NASA's website, nasa.gov, where you can follow all this information as well. Uh, I actually have posted on the Franklin Institute's website a blog that describes in a little bit more detail what's happening this afternoon and has a number of links to help you understand what the landing sequence will be like this afternoon and why it is such an exciting thing to watch because of the amount of danger that's involved in this. Uh, so it's really exciting to watch this, as I mentioned before. And if you look for my blog about Perseverance 2020 on Mars on the Franklin Institute's website, you'll be able to uh, find those links and links as they guide you to where you can go at nasa.gov to uh, follow the, uh, the program as it's happening, or follow the mission as it's happening this afternoon. Okay, I don't want to take up too much time this afternoon, uh, this morning. I just wanted to give you a brief overview about this and give you an idea of where you can go uh, to keep track of this. So again, nasa.gov or NASA TV streaming service will allow you to watch as all this is happening today. And this is certainly uh, the most exciting and the riskiest part of the mission so far, but it's just the beginning of the mission. So once the spacecraft gets through these seven minutes later today as it lands on the surface of the way at 3.55 p.m., but don't wait until then, get in on the streams a little bit earlier when uh, you'll find full descriptions from uh, beginning at 2.15 this afternoon. NASA will begin its description of what's happening uh, with the rover as it lands today. But after that, the rest of the mission rolls out, and for the next two years, we'll be learning all sorts of exciting things uh, about the early history of Mars and hopefully a little bit more about what Mars is like that will help us as we begin to make our plans to send humans to Mars to explore in the not too distant future. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute Science Museum. Again, if you have questions for me, you can throw them in the comment box down there and hopefully I'll be uh, to answer some of those questions for you. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, keep track of what we're doing at Franklin Institute at the Franklin Institute's website, fi.edu. You'll find all kinds of great information there about all the stuff we're doing in the Science Museum and uh, all of the other science content that we have available for you to follow along with missions like this and lots of other really great stuff. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll catch you again soon, and enjoy the mission today. Good luck to NASA, and uh, go Perseverance.